Okay, people. So I am delighted to be uh, sitting here with Peter Callahan, who um, is the writer, director, and also the star of this new film, Out and About. Peter, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, it's a uh, pleasure to be here. I look forward to talking to you today. Hey, well, AJ hit me up and said, I think you're going to enjoy this film. And I think um, you'd enjoy talking to Peter. So when AJ hits me, I listen because she hasn't let me down yet. Nice. And got to say, ain't let me down with this one. Like, out and about, I, ain't, I think if anyone had told me, we got, um, you know, an 80 minute film about a guy walking around a neighborhood. I'd be like, ah, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. what, but watching it, it's like, oh, shit. I've had those walks, right? right? Yeah. I've done that. You know what I mean? So what was it about this? Like, how did all of this come about? Well, you know, I, I take daily walks in my town where I shot the movie. I, I do a version of the movie every day. I'm walking around, I'm looking around, and I'm in my head with all my thoughts all day long, you know, I, you know, walking around, looking at this, looking at that, sometimes running into people. And so I'm, you know, I'm mostly in my head, but I'm also talking to people. And I thought, well, this would be, this might be an interesting movie. You know, what if I just tried to do this in real, virtually real time? And that's where mm. the, uh, the idea for the movie came from. Basically living, living a version of it every day. Uh, okay. And um, how did you, what, because, you know, there's thinking about doing something like this. And I think, because the key with this, right, the, it, when you take another film, you know, it's a rom-com, an action film, whatever genre, mm -hmm. right, conversation, the communication is very important, but you've got this other stuff to fall back on, right? In an right. action film, yeah. the, big, the big explosions and car chases, the rom-com, it's that yeah. magic, it's that chemistry. With this, if the conversations don't work, this film does not work. So yeah. how did you like nail them? Did you take a did you take a tape recorder and tape some of the interactions from your daily walks and go, that's I want no. that. Kind of <laughs> no, I just used my imagination and my experience and you know my memories of conversations. And it really just grew from there to write write a screenplay based on that. Um, I guess, you know, maybe I have a vivid imagination or something, but that's, it just comes from real life, basically. And, and that's, that's where that script and, and other scripts I've written come from. Okay. So um, have you been in a situation where you're like, nice wedges? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, all, all, everything that is in that movie rings true to me, you know, in my own experience in some way. So mm. I, I've, I've lived a lot of it. <laughs> well, now it's, it's easier to write, I guess, when you when you've lived lived versions of it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think that some some conversations were almost verbatim from real life. Conversations. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I feel if we're all to be fair, right? We've all been in some of those situations, right? Where you're you're seeing someone and you don't really care but it's just like hey how was your weekend how's the family and it's just uh, like hey do i care i don't really care yeah. why am i doing this you know what i mean yeah and, or letting someone talk complete and utter shit to you and you're like okay yeah all right oh and it's just like why didn't i say something what's that right like? yeah so that's i mean that's a lot of what the that's what the movie is you know it's it's this inner monologue contrasted with what we're actually saying to people you know, mm. and it alternates between the two. And often, you know, what we're thinking is very different from what we what, what we say. And, and I just wanted to portray that uh, that experience and that and that usually 
contrasting experience of, of, of our daily lives and I and hope that it would resonate with other people. Hope that other people had similar thoughts inside their head that I do. Mm, mm. I think especially when you're walking around your the neighborhood you grew up in, right? Where you're seeing the be like, oh, Steve used to live here. One of these families still own that house. And yeah, oh, yeah. I remember playing in that garden and like we all have those faults. Yeah. So it, it's definitely endearing to see this you know what i mean come to life because i think we can all like live that experience through this yeah. well good i you know i'm glad to hear that that was the goal to you know to to create a movie that people uh can relate to on some level and i'm, I'm you know that's what i like to hear that it does work for people who you know like yeah i've had those thoughts i've had those conversations I know somebody like that from my childhood that now is grown up and, and, I, and it can be awkward talking to them. So that's what I was going for. Mm, mm. I, I, it was definitely nice to see someone else struggling with dictation on their phone because I cannot get that stuff to work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was struggling with that uh, about 20 minutes ago, actually. <laughs> I was just impressed that yeah. you got an exclamation mark because whenever I've tried anything like that, it just gives me words. And I'm just like, no, yeah, just give me the dot. Just full stop. Like, stop <laughs> just saying full stop. Give me a full stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you, uh, yeah, <laughs> for those of us who, who wrestle with that, it certainly uh, will ring true. <laughs> I, when you were, you know, putting this together, what kind of because there's some kind of thoughts that you have while walking around you know it, it's like i think mean, you you say hello to an indian gentleman in his mm -hmm. house and then you are and the thoughts you have around that like was there any kind of like oh should i say is it going to be okay to say this because you know how like yeah. everyone overreacts to certain things and even when it's being couched in the way you do it right and it's not offensive it's thoughts that you're having around these situations right there, there's i guarantee there's probably going to be a comment of something like, i can't believe you said that but so was there any for well, certainly yeah there were certainly some I, I i thought a lot about that issue and 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 you know the first, you know, the script I wrote is probably is, is you know, I'm sort of self-centering, self-censoring already when I write this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, you know, as I, I say, this is the censored version you're seeing. It's kind of an uncensored, you know, look at a, at a man's life and, and his mind, but it's really censored to some degree. You know, many of the thoughts we have are much more raw and, and <laughs> yes. ugly than anybody could ever put on screen. <laughs> And so the first version of the screenplay was, you know, more offensive to, you know, lack of a better word. You know, what we shot, you know, I maybe took some things out. And then in the editing, I took some more things out that were, you know, potentially offensive. But I tried not to, I tried to leave it, you know, somewhat raw and truthful and honest, because that's the point of the movie. And it's definitely going to offend people. And we did some test screenings and some comments. And you know, we got we got some unpleasant comments back from people who objected to this or that in the movie. But that's that's what the film is. And so uh, we're just putting it out there, and if people can say what they want. Mm. I mean, I didn't find it offensive. Right. I, I found like when you speak to your friend in the car and you're just like, oh, man, it must be tough. You know, I was like, well, yeah, that you know, what I mean, like if you're that person's friend, why wouldn't you maybe have that fault? Because uh, yeah. it could well be right. Because I grew up in a, basically an all white neighborhood mm -hmm. and it was abuse every day. Like uh, every day, just walking yeah. to the bus stop, people drive past, you know, N-word, 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 like just all of this. So right. that that 
it happens right so if someone isn't thinking wait what could the what could it be like for this person in this situation mm -hmm. like i don't know if you can really call yourself a friend of that person if you're not yeah. being uh, empathetic yeah. and i'm glad, glad to hear that that particular scene worked for you yeah i mean yeah that's that was that was the idea just to you know, a lot of things I didn't think about their impact so much. Some things I did and some things I didn't. It was like I just wanted to tell a story and and just hopefully it worked for people. And and if they like it, it's great. If they don't, not so great, but okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, you know, you did Aaron Sorkin proud, right? It's all walk and talk. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, did you have an idea of like how this ends when when you were thinking of right? I'm gonna have this guy walk around. Wait, like, what was like the star endpoint, and how much did that change? It didn't really change. I sort of it was you know it's a story was set in the in in a single afternoon where. This character is wrestling with the decision he's got to make regarding his career. And he's also trying to convince his daughter to come home for uh, his mother's birthday party. Those are really the two things the character is wrestling with. And so I had um, a vague sense of where I wanted to end up in the film and pretty much wrote that, uh, you know, wrote that in the screenplay. And that's what we end up doing. There was a, a, a revision on the very last scene that affected maybe the, the look and the setting of it, but not really majorly. It was still the same movie for sure. We just made some subtle changes, subtle but meaningful changes mm -hmm. at, the, at the very last scene that uh, I think were for the best. Okay. Um, and what kind of made you think about doing those changes? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't want to give the movie away for anybody who's going to see it. So uh, I just thought, you know, that it would be a little more impactful visually if I did A instead of B. Right, right. And more of a coherent piece of art. If I if I made this one change um, and just be a little more of a pure vision of what I intended to do, okay. Uh... It's really more of a pure. That, that's yeah. It's more pure what I came up with. The, mm. What I originally wrote and we actually filmed just wasn't quite right, and I feel like the version we end up with was was what the film really was meant to be. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Was there many kind of changes within the shoot itself? There was virtually none, no changes at all. And, uh, you know, I'd made two films before. And in those, those movies, we, uh, you know, we changed many things. We, we, we shot scenes that we didn't use. We, we, uh, but you know, changed around the order of certain things, you know, here and there. But in this film, we shot every scene we shot, we used in the movie. We used less of it, you know, we took away dialogue, we made the scenes shorter, but it's essentially what was written in the same order it was written. So the editing was really just about polishing those scenes, not about reimagining the entire movie and you know, assembling it from different pieces and, you know, pulling it all together and pulling it apart and blah, blah, blah. We just kind of uh, pretty much filmed what I wanted to film and was happy with what we filmed and just honed that and worked to uh, sculpt that into the finished film. Okay. Okay. Now I did read, there was one big change that you weren't originally meant to be starring in this. No. So how no. did that come about? 
Well, you know, when I first wrote the script, I could sort of imagine myself acting in it because it's a very personal movie, but I've never acted before. Mm. So, you know, that notion, you know, and the idea of it kind of scared me. So I kind of, you know, vacillated between, gee, I would love to act in this movie. I think I could do it well, too. I've never acted before. I might be terrible. You know, this is a terrifying thought. I'm, I don't want to do that. And then so, uh, and more importantly, my producers didn't want me to act in it. <laughs> so that notion was pretty, pretty dead on arrival. So what we did, we started looking at many actors in New York City. Uh, we had a casting director. We go down and look at these, uh, you know, men who are right for the part age-wise. And we looked at a lot of different guys. And nobody really, nobody seemed perfect for the role. Nobody really made us passionate, me and my producing uh, partners. Nobody really set us on fire. Nobody excited us. Finally, as we got closer, we had, you know, we finally settled on an actor we all thought was pretty, pretty talented and could do the part well enough. And, you know, we were all set to shoot and then just, you know, 36 hours before filming began, I just realized my heart wasn't in it. I just, I wanted to play this role myself, whether it, you know, failed miserably or not, I wanted to give it a shot. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life wondering whether, uh, you know, what could the movie have been if I had done it because it's such a personal, in, in, you know, individual idiosyncratic story. I thought I could play the role best. So, you know, I convinced my producers that we needed to make the switch and they weren't so happy about, about it, but to their credit, they came around and at the very last minute, you know, we just replaced the actor and, and I stepped in and did it. And luckily I feel it turned out really well and I feel like I made the right decision and I feel it's a better movie because of it. And um, how do the producing partners feel now it's yeah. out in the world? It's funny, you know, they uh, they were initially <laughs> very resistant. And uh, <laughs> I feel like, you know, I feel like they came around pretty quickly. I feel like, you know, one of them came around on the first day of the set, just seeing me do it. And I just had this feeling, oh my, okay, this is going to be fine. You know, he was terrified. And I, I also feel that they responded favorably to what it gave us production wise. It made mm. things so much uh, more efficient to not have to deal with a lead actor, not have to worry about him, not have to feed him, not have to ask him how he's doing. And it just made the production so much uh, quicker and easier in every way. So from a producing standpoint, it was an advantage to have an actor who's free, me, you know, they're not paying me. And it's also because of the voiceover component down the road, when we're adding in the voiceover and the inner monologue, I'm available to do it. I'm still mm. making the movie in the editing room. I can do it. We're not chasing down some actor who might be in California saying, hey, can you, you know, spend a couple of hours in a recording studio, um, you know, recording some dialogue for us. So I appealed to the producers on, on that standpoint, uh, from, <laughs> from that standpoint as well. And, and I, you know, I feel like they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty happy and that agree that we, we all made the right the choice in the end. Yeah. No, I yeah, I think it turned out pretty great, man. I think you did a solid job. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's, so good. I, you know, it's it is a very personal movie, and I don't know if I could act in anything else, but uh, certainly this felt very, <laughs> very, very close to my heart. <laughs> now, I, I think the question on everyone's lips is: Is thirteen really the limit on your push-ups? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually can do more. I can do, <laughs> can do more than 13, 13 push ups. Uh, so, uh, you know, 
Everything, you know, everything is hurting, hurting these days as a middle-aged man. You know, my wrist hurts, that hurts, everything hurts. But yeah, I think I can do more than more than more than 13 push-ups. Okay, now the world knows. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, what am I going to do? Also, you know, from a, a cinematic standpoint, what am I going to do? Show 40, 40 push-ups on screen, you know? <laughs> so, Story-wise, you only want to be able to do about 12 push-ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that works. And, you know, I think there's a load of people that, because it's always the case when, like, you think, oh, I could, I could do, like, low. And then people attempt and they're like, oh, this is harder than I thought. Right, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's bad enough people have to watch a guy walking around for 80 80 minutes, but (laughs) you want to watch him do 100 (laughs) push-ups. I have to say, the time doesn't really, you don't really notice the time. Well, good. Uh, you know that the goal is, you know, just to to be absorbed in the story, and 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 things go along, and you're not aware of time or or worrying about things like that. Hopefully, you're just uh, engaged. Yeah, I I just think there's so many um, kind of faults and situations that you relate to, like I think. I've definitely walked around place and thought, ah, oh, they're nice flowers. What are they? <laughs> like, yeah. um, they're not roses. Like, right. um, oh, I have no clue. Oh, I can only think of, you know, dandelions yeah. as the yellow flowers. <laughs> I have no clue what they are. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 well, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you can relate to that. I'm, I'm, so I'm not the only one, yeah. Oh, no, and... The, the the incident where there's an awkward um, meeting and then you run across them again. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god! I've, <laughs> I've that's happened to me. Yeah, yeah. And it's like when that the first interaction just does not go very well, yeah, and right, then right. you're like, oh well, I won't have to see that. And then it's just like, oh my god, how? <laughs> what? <laughs> you're like. Hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah well uh, that certainly happens so <laughs> yeah. yeah no there's a lot of stuff that w- just makes you smile with right. it well, so, I'm glad it's, to hear that. It's, it's great right. how um how did the voiceover stuff work right do you have the film like on a screen so, or does someone just say this, or do you just say the words and they fit it into the right frames? Or like, what's, how, yeah, how well, do you when, do that? When we were shooting it, imagine the voiceover. So we're not, I wasn't saying it because we're not, you know, we're filming and I'm just imagining what some of the voiceover is while I'm walking around. There's two types of voiceover in the movie or really inner monologue. Mm. One while I'm alone and walking down various streets and then uh, shorter interspersed inner monologue when I'm interacting with people, little side comments, little yeah. thoughts. And so um, all that was, it, all that was written in screen, you know, in the screenplay, but it was added in later. So while we we're editing it, I would just, you know, say it into a microphone to you know, have versions of it for us to edit with. Ultimately, when we were close to you know finishing the movie, I went into a professional sound studio and just you know read from the script, uh, just read read the uh, inner monologue. Okay, but I guess you have to be very precise with the timing of that, right? Absolutely. You can't stretch yeah. it out too long because now it doesn't fit the sequence exactly when when you're dealing with particularly when you're dealing with a, you know inner monologue that takes place within a scene with another character the timing is crucial of course you know it's, you're fitting it into a half a second and sometimes during the editing process we're like well that's too, too much it's not working there some we would remove the, the inner monologue altogether or we would reduce the length of it so it was really trial and error during uh, the editing process to get it to work. Um, 
perfectly. Okay. Cool. Like, yeah, it, is that one of the tricky kind of components of the whole editing process, like fine tuning that kind of thing? Absolutely. I mean, you know, it, timing anything is is a, a important part of editing, but particularly when you're having this extra component, the the inner monologue, the voiceover, timing timing becomes crucial. So we would spend you know hours trying to get things right for sure. Mm, what was like the the biggest kind? Because you know you've made features, you've made short films, mm -hmm. right? So coming into this and thinking about what this film was going to be, what on paper felt like would be the big challenges, and then what turned out to be the actual challenges? Right, that's that's a great question. You know, well on paper. What the biggest challenge to us was weather. Right. Because this movie takes place on the course of a single afternoon, entirely outdoors. Mm. We thought the biggest challenge was going to be the weather. It rains where we live. It's cloudy some days. It's sunny. It's, you know, it's cloudy and then it's sunny. And as rains, it stops raining. So we're like, how do we make the weather consistent? What are we going to do? We also had no cover sets, what we call cover sets, meaning uh, places you can go film, you know, some other scene if it's raining that day. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, normal yeah. movie, you're like, okay, well, let's go, f you know, film the scene inside Aunt Sally's house today, since it's raining. Let's, you know, let's do that scene. We had no options like that. And the first thing that happened was we got lucky. There was never terrible rain during the 12 days that we shot the movie. There was a couple of hours here and there, and we had to stop, and that was no fun. But it was not, you know, hugely detrimental to the production. We could keep going. We didn't have to cancel. We didn't have to stop. We didn't have to, you know, send people home. We didn't have to come back three days later or whatever. And the second thing we discovered was that, you know, in the editing room, we would, when it was cloudy, Ultimately, what we discovered is that unless the weather was dramatically different, like it's raining and then sunny, people don't notice. They don't care. Mm -hmm. The movie, you know, we tried to make shots match a little bit in terms of light. Is this cloudy? Is this sunny? Because, you know, we had all sorts of weather over 12 days. And, it, you know, sometimes we did a better job of it than others. But ultimately, the weather does not match. And it doesn't matter if people are engaged. And if you go back and watch even big Hollywood, you know, fancy movies, you'll notice, hey, if you're focusing, if you're just looking for lighting and sun, you're like, that doesn't really match. It was just sunny you mm, know, mm. in that shot. And now in this shot, it's, it's not sunny. What's going <laughs> on here? Yeah. So you realize that if you're, you know, successfully engaging your audience in the story, they're not going to care so much about those things. So that challenge that we were so worried about turned out to be a non-issue. Okay. I uh, think as well, though, with that, Peter, and we've all been out walking, doing stuff, and the weather has gone, like, from really sight. Now it's cloudy. Yeah, Suddenly yeah. A, 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 a quick little shower. Then yeah, the sun's yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So I think... Yeah. Um, you, you, in your mind, because you know Jeff's outside. You, you're just like, yo, he's walking, whatever, uh, whatever, with the weather yeah. kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, and the weather does change. You know, hey, I go for walks and it's cloudy one minute, sunny the next. So that was something we worried about a lot, and it did not turn out to be a problem. The second part of your question was, what turned out to be a problem that we didn't anticipate? I would say. Uh, a global pandemic that forced us to edit the film remotely. We right. shot the movie before the pandemic, but we had to edit it during the pandemic. And I've, you know, any of my previous works, I sat next to the editor in the editing room for most of the time putting together the movie. On this movie, I never got to sit next to our editor, and it was a nightmare having to, you know, do everything via 
messaging or Zoom. It just was so, so much slower, so much more tedious, and it, it made the process so prolonged and unpleasant, really. It's not a good way to make a movie. And we also couldn't ever show the movie to test it, to have a test screening with a bunch oh. of like a room full of people to see how mm. it felt with an audience. We never got to do that. And, and I wish we had. I, I you know, I, I've since seen the movie with an audience several times. And based on what I feel in the room with that audience, there's subtle little changes I'd probably make now. So we didn't have that opportunity. So the the unexpected <laughs> problem was the uh, the pandemic. Right. Yes. Yeah. No. That's an interesting um, what because you know a lot of times it's oh yeah the pandemic because people on set having to go through all the protocols. But for you, it was the editing. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. We had shot before the pandemic, so we had no issues there. Yeah. Right? All the editing. Yeah, right. But because I, in my head, I you kind of, you know, I you know, I might just be weird, but I'm kind of thinking that that would be the easier part of things because, like, you just kind of I don't know, you just imagine sharing a screen, right? So you're both, even though you're not in the same spot, you can see well, the screen. Well, often, and, you know, a lot, a lot of times, you know, the times we did try and do that. The technology isn't quite right. You know, right. the tuning's a little off. You know, it was it didn't turn out very well. Maybe we didn't have the best equipment. You know, it just was not. Or we, you know, maybe there was some, you know, fancy system that would have worked better. But ultimately, you want to be able to say, no, 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 slow down here. No, no, no. I meant a little quicker, a little quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, well, half a second. And and when you you know, we would try. We would both have it on our screens, me and the editor. But the time his timing would be a little different it was yeah just, yeah yeah it just didn't work for whatever reason um so one part of it when we were doing what with the color timing that did that was a little easier to do remotely for whatever reason i think maybe the technology we were using was better and it didn't involve dialogue we're just you know looking at colors and you know mm. colors a little bit so that that went a little smoother yeah, no, I've, I've definitely, yeah, I've definitely noticed an audio delay when you're trying to do certain things with people. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're like, okay, let's start it at the same, okay, three, two, and it's it still, it still kind yeah. of sounds off, and you're like, yo, why is this yeah. off? What's going on? Yeah. If you, you know, if I, uh, I have two TVs in my house, and if I put them both on, they're not synced up. Mm. <laughs> Bedroom does not match the living room for whatever reason. It's the same show. You know, yeah, they, yeah, right? yeah. No, it, I think it's just something you just don't think about. Yeah. So that was uh, that was a real hassle. Right? Mm. And so, but now you got through it. You yeah. got through it, and yeah, like watching it. You know what I mean? I, I, as I said, I didn't notice anything with you know the lighting and the weather and all of that yeah, jazz. Yeah. Everything looked great to me, right? So I say you you got over that hurdle. But yeah, what, yeah. what did this process teach you? What what have you been able to take away from <laughs> doing it in that manner? Well, you know, I think it, it just reinforced what's true about life. The things you worry about aren't don't turn out to be the problems in life and the things we've never thought about do turn out mm. to be problems in life. So it, it, it's, it applies to, to uh, movies specifically, but life in general. So, uh, you know, this is a third movie I've made. And I don't know if I, if I, how much I learn from one movie to another, you know, <laughs> maybe I, I'm slow, but I, you know, I feel like it's sort of kind of, make it make it up each time okay but is there like what's the most enjoyable kind of aspect of movie making for you well i would have said editing before <laughs> i had to do it remotely um but production itself is great it's fun to be on a movie set it's fun to have that shared experience 
So that's a, that's a really special experience that, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to do three times, but I wish I could have done, you know, 25 times by now. It's, it's just being on, the, on a movie set is a wonderful experience, and I wish I could do it more often. Okay. And do you notice a difference between a feature and a short? I thought I've only made one short and uh, no, I, I didn't feel like there was much different. I mean, the feature is just, it's just more of everything. I didn't feel there was any, you know, any substantive, substantive difference between the experience of making it. It was mm. longer. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't 12 days. That's not a long time. No, uh, 12 days and then another uh, day or day and a half of me walking around by myself with just the cameraman and his assistant and our co-producer. So it was just a small, so really 12 days with a full crew with sound and make it the whole crew, the whole deal. Mm. And then a couple of days of what we call pickup shots. Okay. Okay. Now, days. was 12 days like dictated to you from people's schedules or when you kind of, I don't know, storyboarded or plotted out this film, you kind of figured it should take this amount of time. Well, no, it's just money. We, that's something we couldn't afford to go longer. Um, right. Was, you know, it's a, it's a low budget movie. You know, we are every day cost uh, X amount, thousands of dollars. So we needed to do the fewest days possible. And we, uh, this was the, the number of days we felt we could make the movie and do it well. And, you know, so we needed 12 days. We could have made, could have used 24 days, could have used 30 days. Mm. Um, but we needed every, every, every minute of those 12 days. Yeah, yeah. No, financing is always, yeah, yeah. it always <laughs> seems to be an, an issue for people, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. yeah, like, how do you, <laughs> yeah, how, how do you um kind of try and go about financing your project? It's tough, you know, uh, you know, for my, this movie and my first movie were similar. It's just being, getting lucky, finding sort of, individuals who had the means to you know part with some of their money invest in a high risk project like an independent film uh we just got lucky finding some people who wanted to support the arts and then took a chance on us for my second movie i was not involved in that that had movie stars in it uh, a movie called against the current mm. uh, joseph fines and mary tyler moore and a couple of other name actors. So that, you know, was financed by film companies and I was not involved in securing that. Um, my producers were, went out and, and, you know, made that all happen. Right. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, having those names attached definitely must help when it comes yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah. That was a, that was a very different experience. The, the second movie was very different from the first and the third movie. Hmm. Uh, now, not always, you know, and in some ways, you know, that wasn't always for the good. There was, mm. there was good and bad. There's trade offs dealing, you know, there's a lot more cooks in the kitchen for mm. the production. There's a lot more headaches, a lot more hassles. You know, there was a lot of, you know, many challenges on that second movie. The, and it wasn't always a pleasant experience. I, I, I'm grateful for it, though. There was there's 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 pros and cons. There's trade offs on you know having a bigger bigger budget and more uh, uh, you know a, a bigger production. So you know pros and cons. It, but for your pure pleasure and fun experience, the smaller movies like the first one and this one uh, are um, preferable. Okay. Now, do you think to to yourself? Um, like, what are the concessions you are willing to make to tell a story? You know, because if, if it's like, come, if I came to you with like a hundred mil and I was like, Peter, 
I want you to make this film. And you're like, oh man, I've always wanted to make a film like that. And it's like, but Peter, I want to look over the readies. I want to look over, I want to decide on the shots. And you right, know, right, right, I, I've got an idea of a cast, Peter. So yeah, are you ready to do this? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a you know, typical desperate filmmaker. So I probably do a, pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> for, you know, for certain for certain kinds of projects, you know, I, I'm open to different kinds of things. So, you know, so, and for some projects, I might be that might be okay, and I make those compromise. Other ones, no, I, you know, I don't want any part of that. So, I think it's a case by case basis. Okay, I mean, that's fair. That's yeah. fair because I think, I, yeah, I, I think it, to be honest, everyone, you know, some people that I'd never give up, but you know. You know you would in certain oh, situations. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I would be happily, you know, as you know, I'd happily sell out if somebody was buying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's easy to have a stance on something yeah. when there's no chance of getting <laughs> that thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Very principled. Yeah. In the real world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like to deal with your actors and, and, you know, the whole casting situation? I hope I look for actors who I feel don't need any direction. <laughs> I want them to be able to do the job without my help. I pray that I don't have to do any actual <laughs> directing on a movie, <laughs> but I almost always have to do it. There are, there are a couple of actors from, you know, each movie I've made where they just somehow intuited exactly what I wanted and they delivered it. Mm. So, but for the most part, that's not true. You've got to coach them and, you know, guide them to execute the screenplay in the way I want it to be done. And so, you know, it's just, talking to them and finding language to try and bring about the desired result. And some, some take direction very well and can adjust the way you want and others can't do it very well. Uh, so it's a case by case uh, basis with the actors. Right. Right. Are there any sort of resources you like to go in with? Like, do you put together a playlist? Do you have like a, um, a character profile, you know, some other be like, well, what we don't know about this person is like they came from a single parent household and they've dealt with this and blah, blah, you know, this other information yeah, to help I, people get I in. I don't do that. I don't, I, I don't prepare anything like that. I don't think about that kind of stuff. Some actors will um, ask about stuff like that and we'll talk it through if they bring it up, but it's not something I, I bring to the project, uh, you know, I just kind of hope, like I said, I just hope they're going to be able to read the script. Like I imagined it in my, in my ears. And uh, if they can't, we go from there. Right. Okay. How easy was it finding the cast for this film? Well, it was, you know, it, it depends on the role, you know, for, for, Certain parts, at, you know, it's just somebody walked in and you're like, that's the person. Perfect. You know, we don't have to look at anybody else. Uh, and for other parts, we looked at many, many people. So, again, I think it's a case by case, role by role basis. You, you know, some people just strike you as that's the perfect person. And others are uh, a little harder to find. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Now, I've, one thing I was definitely curious about, right, because I guess with some films and location shooting and things like that, it's just like, OK, so that part, that word, right, that building works. So you could probably go, you put in your permission to be like, yo, can we use this and blah, blah, blah. But you're using a neighborhood, right? So yeah. how does that work? Well, you know, we got this is a small town that I live in. And the producers also, you know, grew up here. So this is our town as a way. So we went to the town, the village, and said, "Can we shoot the movie here on your streets?" And they're like, "You know, we'll, you know, we'll try not to bother anybody, small crew." And so we got permission from them instead of 
them charging us a bunch of money to shoot there, which right. they don't do because there are productions from nearby New York City. They'll come out here and shoot, and the village will charge them a lot of money to be clogging up the streets. These are big, mm. productions, you know, big, you know, trucks and everything like that. And so, uh, so on that standpoint, you know, we were lucky and fortunate. Uh, because of our small scale, we didn't have to pay and, and all that. But then we're just going around. We're looking like this is a great house for this character's this interaction to take place in front of this house. You know, the, the movie's entirely outside, so mm. we're not on people's properties too often. But um, you know, we would ask for permission. Um, you know, our location manager, uh, co-producer, would go around and say, hey, can we shoot the movie in your driveway? Can we shoot it in front of your house? And some people would say no, but most people were pretty cooperative and pretty helpful. And so that's how it came about. Just oh, okay. you know, looking around for this will be the perfect place to shoot this film. Let's hope they say yes. You know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because, yeah, that was, I was definitely wondering about that. Because it's just like, yo, how do you get this done? in a situation like this there was there was there was one scene where i one house where i don't think the lady really wanted us there so we kind of pretended we were shooting at the, the house next door but the camera was kind of pointed so there was a little now that i think back on it there was a little bit of you know stealing stealing the shot as it were <laughs> Uh, oh nice. dear, oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> well, now she, now she knows. Yeah, uh, yeah. What was going down? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny, you know. Even since since we've shot that, that actual house was uh, torn down and it's been replaced by a brand new one. So, you know. ah, man, like, maybe maybe her seeing it on the screen. Yeah, I know. She's she like, oh, oh God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for preserving the my house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know the big thing about that though, if you think about it, you got some goodwill up in your neighborhood, man. Like people like you because if everyone was like, "Oh, that Peter Callahan, bit of a dick," right? They would have been like, "Nah, nah, no shooting. You can't do it. Or give us some money." So the <laughs> fact that everyone's just like, "Yo, do yeah, your thing, yeah. man." They like you. That's cool. Okay, well, I, 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 you know, they like me or they don't know me. You know, it's a big enough town. <laughs> you know, not everybody knows everybody. So, uh, or they, they, you know, they liked somebody else, one of the producers or something. So, yeah. Uh, and maybe some people said no because they didn't like me. Who knows? <laughs> Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> now look at the positive side. It, it's yeah. all about the yeah. yeah. flavor of the town. <laughs> yeah, most people are, you know, excited by the idea of a movie and you know having their house on on you know or their street on, in a movie. So for the most part, people are uh, happy to do that. I mean, the place looked lovely, right? It, it so, looked it, so yeah. nice. I, you know, we were standing around when we were filming the movie. But for some reason, the the act of filming the movie made us appreciate to a higher degree how beautiful our little village was. It's like, gee, this is a really beautiful town we're living in we, that we grew up in. You know, how do we not truly appreciate this? You know, mm. it's always an interesting experience to to see the movie in in a, in a new way, see the village in a new way. Yeah. But I guess it's when you're in front of something 24-7, you don't appreciate it for what it is because yeah. you grew yeah. up in that. So yeah. it's just, awesome. this is just a place I grew up. Yeah. Right? But when, about, yeah. Yeah. Other people see it because it kind, there's a lot of it that reminded me of the Lake District here. Right, there's a bit when you're walking, you see the river between the houses, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, There's um, yeah, we went to the Lake District for New Year's right. and going on some walks around yeah. the, 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 the neighborhood and the village and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. So you're walking down the hill and you're just seeing the lake 
like one of the big lakes in front of you. Uh, I think it's yeah, it's Lake Windermere. So we're seeing Lake, uh, and it's just beautiful. And so watching this, it there's just moments where it just brought that back to me. I'm just like, oh shit. yeah, you know. So yeah, some it, sometimes we don't always appreciate what we have, or you know, and and so. Uh, I haven't been to the Lake District. I, I would love to go. It's on it's on my list of places I would like to see. But I can imagine it's beautiful. And, and I can imagine maybe the people who live there don't always <laughs> appreciate how beautiful it is. <laughs> yeah. No, but, no. Definitely. Yeah, we're in a great area here. And, and making the movie made us uh, all appreciate it a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And what has been the reaction now the film is out. Uh, the, you know, we had a couple of local screenings, you know, for the people in town, anybody wanted to come see it at the library. And it was very positive. People really seemed to enjoy the movie. So from the community itself, it's been very supportive. Uh, and then as you know, in the, in the wider world, we played a bunch of film festivals. Uh, the film has won several awards at various festivals, which is nice. And so, uh, I, people seem to really like it. They seem to really, you know, respond and relate to what the character is going through. And the idea of the very concept of the movie of our, our inner selves with an inner monologue versus what we present to the world. So that's the inner thoughts are and versus outer outer experience is seems to be resonating a lot with, with a lot of people. So we've been happy with the response. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, yeah. we've been cool. And it's now, it's uh, just here in America, it is now um, out available on video on demand. It's not available yet in the UK, um, but will be eventually. Uh, it's also, it's actually showing, there's a screening of it, if you want to see it in a movie theater, uh, at the Romford Film Festival, Monday the 29th. Uh, uh -huh. I guess that Romford is just outside London? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that, yeah, Rumford Film Festival has some good films. Yeah, so we're, we're showing there, I believe, Monday the 29th, sometime okay. in the afternoon. All right. Well, so, oh. Near London, please go check it out. Yeah, we, we will put a link to that in the oh, um, episode okay. information. Yeah, I forgot Rumford was, Festival was coming up. Yeah, yeah. Hey. So, yeah so good timing on that front. Mm, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Like, how do you work all of the, you know, the whole distribution situation out? Well, we had a, uh, we hired a sales agent at one point and uh, that sales agent, you know, contacted various distributors and, you know, eventually we found a small distributor. It's not, you know, there's no movie stars in this movie. There's nothing big or fancy about it. So it's a small distribution thing where it's no theatrical. It's only really streaming. So the only chance to see it in a theater setting are places like the Romford Film Festival. Uh, so, you know, we found a small distributor who wants to put it out into the world and we're happy with that. And so, you know, streaming is uh, the reality for most small films today. And so that's where we're at. Okay. Well, you know, I, I think things like this, you know what I mean? It's the amount of great films you see at festivals. And when people see a great film, you know, they tell people about it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, I think it, it, it you know, it, it can be a good thing, you know, because you get that festival buzz and people are like, yeah, oh, yeah. Did you see blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. And they'll tell somebody and then they'll say, hey, when can we get, you know? And we, we tell people, you know, who are interested and want to tell other people. You know, you can go to our website, uh, which is, you know, outandaboutmovie.com, outandaboutmovie.com, um, and can follow where, and when and where we're going to be. And they can, uh, you know, tell if they enjoy it. They can, you know, find out how to stream it or uh, tell other people, to, you know, where there might be a festival screening. There'll probably be a few more this year. Oh, awesome. So if there's a festival... Right, and they're in. They can contact you via the website and be like, "Yo, could we show this?" Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely, fantastic. Well, people, you heard that, right? So hit up Peter to go get his film at your festival. That's right, absolutely. 
<laughs> now all that information will be on the website so people yep. can um yeah follow you and see what's going on which is yeah, great absolutely. yeah they should and we're also on facebook and instagram and and all uh all that as well cool cool that will all be there man that will all be there great, so great, great. now this is out in the world yep. have you got ideas of what you're going to be doing next no I have no, no idea. You know, there are other screenplays I've written that I would love to make, but I don't see any viable path right now to getting those movies made. I do want to, I want to act again for one thing. Okay. I would like to write something that I could act in. So uh, I just don't have any ideas. I'd like to tell you I'm working on this great screenplay, but I got nothing. Uh, well, I, 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 I tell you something that's coming up. So on the oh god, was it the twenty fourth of June? Sci Fi London is having a forty eight hour film competition. Mm -hmm. So if you submit your name, right, <laughs> and, and your team, then on the day you, at eleven a.m. you get sent the title of your film. The, I think it's the concept and a prop list and a theme, which right. you don't have to use, but it, that, that information gets, and then you have a couple of days to put that together and send them back the finished thing on, on the 26th, Monday the 26th. But it only has to be five minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you think to yourself, um, I like these are genres I'd like to make films in, or is it more just a story, a concept? I, 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 yeah, just the story comes to me. I don't. First of all, I'm I'm not interested in science fiction or uh, action movie things like that, so I don't have any interest in that kind of stuff. But you know, I like I like drama, I like silly comedy. I do like different genres. And, you know, I've written a, several screenplays over my life, uh, you know, 15 or 20, 20 screenplays. And there's all different kinds. You know, some are thrillers, some are dramatic, you know, nothing funny about it. And others are just silly comedies. So I've done it all. The ones I gravitate to the most, though, are these more personal movies like Out and About. And they tend to combine drama with humor. They tend to mirror real life, you know, mm. real life, both tragic and funny. And those are the kind of, uh, those are the movies I like to see. And those are the ones I most like to make. Okay. Yeah. Because watching this, a couple of movies like that jumped to mind with just, where we're ju it's that slice of life, someone walking around, thoughts and talking. Mm -hmm. And that was um, Richard Linklater's before sunrise right, before right. Sunrise, i always forget if it's sunrise or sunset first before but that first sunset. one when jesse and celeste are walking around the city uh, well I, i'm not sure, sure which one is first but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh i and the movie slacker richard oh. slacker is yeah, more, yeah, yeah. even more like this movie it's just sort of random encounters you know our movie is unique and my, our movie has one similarity with that movie, which is that there's no recurring characters, really. In that movie, there is literally none. In, in, in this movie, I'm the recurring character, but there's no, none of the supporting characters come mm. back. You're just going from one place to another. So it is very much like a Richard Linklater slacker in that regard. Um, it's also like a movie called The Swimmer, an old movie starring Burt Lancaster, where... Uh, he swims from one swimming pool to an, the other, to to the next pool to get across the county to his home. So it's, it's similar in structure to that. It's a, it's a guy on a journey in a single afternoon going from, you know, point A to point B with no recurring characters. No, you know, it's just something happens and they move on. Okay. I've not seen that one. It's an interesting movie. I recommend it. Okay. And right. yeah, you'll 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 probably notice just like oh yeah it's kind of similar in in uh, structure. Uh -huh. I will keep an eye out for sure. Yeah. 
Like, were there any like particular directors that kind of had you like thinking, this is what I would like to do? No, I, I, you know, I feel like I just, the movies I grew up with are American movies from the 1970s. And I just feel like that was a great era for films. And those are my favorite movies. And I feel like those filmmakers, you know, influenced me. There's no one particular director or screenwriter. It's just sort of a combination of, and it was really an era of movies that influenced my work. 1970s America. Americana. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, before I let you go, like, what is your kind of thoughts on, like, modern storytelling? You know what I mean? Because a lot of people believe that, you know, the era of the cinema is over. Some people think that, you know, Superhero films are killing the industry. Like, I, no, I've, I've never seen a superhero movie. I don't understand why anybody who's more than 12 years old would want to see one. I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> I wish that there, you know, cinema is definitely hurting. There's just, you know, there's, there's no real market anymore. The, the American Hollywood studios, they're not making thoughtful, interesting movies. There are thoughtful, interesting movies being made independently. So that still goes on. And there's great work being done in television. So, you know, the art of dramatic storytelling is, is alive and as strong as ever. But the experience of seeing a real a movie for adults in a movie theater is, you know, a rarer and rarer experience, unfortunately. Mm. But do you think some of that, in part, is the, you know what I mean, the cinema, the, the movie theatre's fault? Because when you look at the price, like, I just remember growing up, right, going to the cinema, you, you just five pounds, right? And with that five pounds, you bought your, your cinema ticket, you could buy, it, so, you know, a bag of penny sweets in a newsagent across the road. Right. You know what I mean? It was, it was great. But now going to the cinema, you, like yeah. a ticket is close to 20 pounds. Yeah. I, I, I wonder, I don't know enough about the economics of, of, of all that to, to, to give you an intelligent answer <laughs> uh, whether pricing, to what degree does pricing affect uh, the cinema experience? I don't know. It certainly can't help. You know, it certainly seemed cheaper years ago. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, it can be a big ordeal. And, and, I, and I think, you know, I, I think people's taste change. They, they realize how expensive it is. And so yeah. they're, less likely to take a chance on a film. They want to know sort of exactly what they're getting, I think, which is why the superhero movies and the movies that are based on, you know, a pre-existing property are better bets financially because people don't want to take chances. They don't want to spend all that money on, on a ticket and, a, you know, babysitters or whatever all the expenses are, you know, related to going out to the movies and also there's such great stuff being streamed right into their homes. So there's no, there's no incentive. There's no need to leave the house. You can watch great movies right at home. Mm. You now until the end of time, <laughs> you will not run out. And, yeah. and the, the home movie theater experience, the TVs are bigger now, the sound is better, we can, you know, it's not really the same, but it, it's certainly better than when I was a kid watching a little black and white TV. Oh my gosh, you yeah. Know, you know, watching with the commercials, that's how I saw some old classic movies, you know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now you don't, you don't have to deal with any of that. Um, yeah. No, no, the, the, definitely the cinema experience is, I think it's a part of it. And the fact that home screening has improved vastly. I think there are certain films which you can go, you know what, I could watch that at home. 
mm-hmm. think it's yeah. Similar. Yeah, certain ones, you know, I I believe every serious movie should be seen in a movie theater for for many reasons. One, it's a bigger, the screen is bigger, Mm. um, but mostly you, you know, you're you're also experiencing with other people around. But the biggest thing is you're focused on it. You're actually paying attention to the movie. You're not looking at your device. You're not stopping it to talk to someone. You're not pausing it. You're not getting up. To you know, answer the you're not doing all the things I think people do when they're watching movies at home. The movie starts when it starts. It doesn't start when you want it to start. It starts at seven thirty. You're yes. you're either there or you're not. So it's a very different experience. Mm, mm. I I I one thing I've noticed because I worked in a cinema when I was at university, and. Yes. It was, I remember when I first started, there was a lot, there's be so many complaints about people talking in screens and things like that. Yeah. So I implemented a no strike policy. Because my view is everyone knows how you're meant to act when you get to the cinema. Yeah. You know you're not meant to be talking or being on your phone. So if someone was, they're out, right? That's and that. the yeah. complaints came down. And I just think when it's a situation like that, right, it's about customer satisfaction. And when people can sit in a screen without any, you know what I mean, unfiltered yeah, I noise and abuse, yeah. you it's enjoy. I'm, I'm with you, Kevin. You know, if I go into a movie theater, I'm seeing people texting. It drives me crazy. Mm. I wish there was a manager like you to kick him out. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think that is, uh, you know, it's not all of it, but when you're thinking about, as you said, it's the price, right? It, it's yeah, yeah. You, you, the other things that factor in, babysitters and just transport mm-hmm. and just all of that. So if you're paying all of that and you know this cinema is notorious with people talking in the screen, yeah, yeah. it's just that I'd rather not. Yeah, yeah, no, I've had many unpleasant experiences at movie theaters for that and and it is a drawback of the cinema experience, unfortunately. Um, mm. There is a you know a theater chain here in America, Alamo Theater, where they claim to you know forbid you to text and talk, but you know I don't know how much they really enforce it. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard good things about the Alamo. I haven't mm. had the pleasure of you know checking that one out when I've been well, over. It's kind of ironic that they have that policy because they're also serving you food. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, uh, how, how can you pay attention to the movie when you're eating a cheeseburger? You know? I, I know. You do, you do wonder about that. that. <laughs> but I think the cinema, for me, I don't think the cinema experience will die because the experience is so different. I remember right. the, yeah. I think it was the 2021 London Film Festival. Like the opening film was Harder They Come, right? It's a Western film and mm-hmm. god damn. Like it's one of those films where the soundtrack is another component of the film. It, it, it's like another actor, you know? Right. And it so it just matched up with everything so perfectly. And it was such an incredible experience. Right, right. Yeah, you can't you can't recreate that at home. Mm. Yeah, and there's a similar thing with June. I remember seeing June in the cinema, and like the most recent version, Dennis Villeneuve's, and it was incredible. And it's just like you know, what I mean, my sound isn't too bad at home, but, it, but it's nothing it's nowhere near that. It's, it's a whole different experience. Yeah, and, you know, it's to be in a cinema, you are transported to a different, mm. a different place. You're not in your familiar surroundings. You're not. So everything, all the senses are heightened. Everything is is tuned into fully experiencing that movie. And that's that is something that won't be matched at home. And the move, the cinemas will survive. I just worry that you know interesting movies will be harder to find in theaters because of superhero stuff and some of the other factors we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, 
I ain't gonna lie, Pia. I do enjoy a superhero film. All right, I hear uh, that, man. Yeah, yeah. Put your part of the problem, Kevin. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen. I saw the original Star Wars under protest when I was 15 years old. I was like, I don't really want to see this movie. Somebody said, You gotta see it. You gotta see it. You gotta see it. I, saw, I think I saw it in Times Square, New York. And, you know, when it was still during its first run, I finally went to see it. Uh, and I remember thinking, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it's, I didn't hate it. I wasn't <laughs> hate it, but I don't, it's like, I didn't, it just didn't, didn't mean much to me. Mm. And I've never seen any further Star Wars. I've never seen any, you know, any Marvel movie. I just, they're just, it's a whole world that has, I have nothing to do with. <laughs> hey you know what everyone's got different tastes yeah, just, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? but that i think that for me that's the joy of storytelling yeah. right because there's something for everyone and even if someone's like i don't like thrillers right you could go but what do you like and you could find a thriller that they would like right and that's what i love about yeah, I can't guarantee story. that you know it's possible you force me into a marvel movie i might think oh my god this is pretty good <laughs> 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 uh, you know, never say never <laughs> hey that's the spirit man never. that's the spirit <laughs> all right man well right. Uh, have you got any are there any upcoming festivals that you know, just you know, the romford the romford one uh, coming up uh, is I think the only one scheduled. Uh, there may, yeah, I think that's it for now. But okay. again, if anything comes up, we'll certainly announce it on our website, you know, uh, outandaboutmovie.com. But that's really, uh, and just stay tuned for streaming information in the UK and other countries. Right now, it is available in uh, North America. So people, wherever they uh, stream movies, Amazon or Apple, whatever it is, it is available now. Awesome. So people, that that's even more incentive to follow Peter and the film so you know when it might that's be right. screening yeah. in your neighborhood. Oh, absolutely. So, hey, all the information will be on the website. So make sure you go there, check out Out and About. It... Look, you will have lived that experience, right? Yep. So it is going to be a fun, a fun way of reliving some of those moments which you've had wandering yep. around a neighborhood. Absolutely, please, yeah, check us out. Awesome, Peter. Thank you very much. AJ was right. This okay. was a pleasure talking to you. So right. well, thank you, know, you for your time. Well, you, you asked some really good questions, and then you made me think about things I hadn't thought about before. So. I appreciate that. Uh, it was an interesting experience for me as well. Awesome. I'm glad you've had a good time yeah. too, man. Uh, All right, right, man. Well, take it easy. And when you have a, another project, please feel free to come by. Absolutely. All right. I'll, I'm going to come up with an idea. I'm going to write it. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to make it. And I'm going <laughs> to come back on this podcast. Awesome, man. All awesome. Right. All right. You take care. You too. Thank All you. Right. Man. Bye.